and both of these souls are in your heart. Now, some people can see this this um, this jiva atma, and they can see the param atma, which is about four inches high near your heart, and this one is what makes us different and special to these other service to self entities. They have destroyed this soul and detached themselves from this soul ages and eons ago. And they have infiltrated all the levels and branches of government and all of these gangs, the Knights of Malta, the Teutonic Knights, uh, the Jesuits. These are controlled by demon entities and they create uh, further grandiose um, entities called egregores. And how they do that is they, um, they have rituals and, and, and ceremonies and to create these egregores. So what will happen is some powerful uh, Roman families like the Friscobaldi, Aldo Brandini, Farnese, Borgia, all of these uh, criminal families who have uh, the reins of power. If you want to know who's running the show on the physical plane, you have to go to demon-infested Rome and the families that have controlled Rome and their other corporations, i.e. Paris, uh, London and Bonn in Germany. And, of course, by extension, uh, DC, Wall Street and the Zionists. So they are all controlled by Italian families, rest assured, and Germanic families uh, because of the Holy Roman Empire, which was once Roman and German. <clears throat> And so, um, and the German families would be the Rothschilds, the Bowers, um, the Windsors, or the Habsburg uh, ha Gothers, the Habsburgs, the Hanovers, and all of these, the, the Guelphs, the black nobility, basically black because their deeds are black. And um, these families, they get together in pacts, in covens. Uh, they are witches, covens of witches, dens, den of thieves. Uh, they are Pharisees. They are offspring of vipers. They have no source connection. Um, they All they want to do is rule at all costs, no matter how, even if they suffer. For instance, chemtrails, which are toxic, and all of these um, horrible uh, fluoride in the water and all of this poison that they're putting everywhere, chemicals, this is deliberate because they are masters at destroying the souls of other beings. And they teach um, uh, disgusting practices such as eating the carcasses of dead sentient beings called animals. They believe that since animals don't speak and express their disgust at being murdered and slaughtered and cut, butchered into tiny pieces and then barbecued and grilled and uh, boiled and roasted, to be devoured by unconscious human beings. This is a religion. This is a slanderous, blasphemous religion to keep us reincarnating. For they know that if this, the blood is impure of a jiva, such as you and I, we will have to reincarnate on this place to uh, taste more blood. And so their goal is to teach us that it is cuisine to eat meat. Oh, you've got rabbit. Eat rabbit and you can have a rabbit heart. Eat chicken and you can have a yellow-livered chicken gutless uh, personality. Eat, eat cows so you can be chattel for the elite. Eat sheep so you can be sheeple for the churches. Um, eat duck so you can be a coward. Eat swine so you can be swine-hearted. You are what you eat. Um, and so eat, a, eat goat so you can be a sacrificial goat and go to war and fight for these el elite you see, off you go, Christian soldiers, off you go to war. We shall make the uniforms as we've done before. But now, do these families themselves, uh, when they, let's say, do they reincarnate into the same family? Do they, uh, they have a soul upon birth, or is it lost in the course of life, in the course of ritual? No, no, they know the rituals. This is why they love to keep their bloodlines pure, because they know how to uh, keep... Um, incarnation in their family line. So Queen Elizabeth, for instance, which would be a, a demon from uh, probably Queen Mary, you could probably, she would probably go back to Queen Mary, Bloody Mary. She's the one who used to line up Christians 
with her machines and, and, and butcher them, and she used to bl- uh, bathe in the blood of virgins. This would be Queen, Queen Elizabeth, undoubtedly, undoubtedly. And so their families, they, they keep reincarnating into the same families, whereas we're lost. We don't have genealogies where we can... We don't have rituals. We've lost our, we've lost our ancestor worship. Well, now you mentioned before th- this notion that the Copernican age actually uh, helped to put us into a, a, a trap, a hierarchical uh, trap, as opposed to most people being under the impression that actually that liberated us from the confines of the Catholic Church's dogma and control structure. How, how would you say that this actually enslaved us with the notion of, of the globe and, and, and our place within, within a greater cosmos? Um, how would you say that actually enslaved us? Well, well, I, I can um, simplify the whole enslavement of mankind by pointing out three individuals that have caused more harm, um, unbeknownst to them probably, than any other individual. So Darwin and his buffoonery of the monkey man theories, uh, which are hinging on or hinging on the work of Copernicus, the ball, the globe, and Copernicus, of course, being Aristotelian, uh, Aristotle. And those three are the most uh, harmful individuals and influ- influ- harmfully influ- influential uh, individuals of history. Um, Aristotle is the cause and origin of all of our materialist uh, empirical, speculative, philosophical, material, worldly wise buffoonery. Um, he parted company with the great Plato, who was a spiritualist, mm-hmm. a transcendental um, theologian, uh, as was Pythagoras. These guys were hermetists. They went to India. They studied the true science that was um, that was uh, pure and <laughs> undefiled. So when um, Plato became a transcendental scientist and started to go into theology, um, they parted company. And, of course, Aristotle went and founded the uh, Peripatetic School. And um, this is where all the materialist buffoonery came into the world. And, And from that moment we really, really idolised the materialist philosopher, the speculative philosopher, speculating and, and wondering about all things and, and using the material, physical, known world visible to our eyes right. as, the, as, the, right. yeah, as the centre and starting point of all of our wisdom. And so Copernicus did the same thing, really. Um, thinking that mechanical equations and we can understand this cosmos materially and only materially because there's no spiritual cause. And so what, we, uh, what appears to look like spheres in the heavens, we must be living on a sphere, we must be living on a ball. And, and so everything now is, they get their rulers out and, and, um, you know, and measure everything in their laboratories and do calculations to understand God.